I am going to do what I do best. I am going to warrantedly and correctly overanalyze a meme through the lens of my politics, but this time it's more than a meme. It is a lifestyle. It is a metaphysical reality, and that is that this summer is white boy summer, okay? This is white boy summer. Why is this? What does it mean? Why are people melting down about it? So many questions, and we will answer all of them. But you might remember that there was a song that came out a couple years ago called Hot Girl Summer. And the whole point of the song was exactly that. It's Hot Girl Summer. It's a summer for girls to live their best lives, be independent, be bad, enjoy yourself, be a hoe. It's hoe season. So basically, it was an anthem for young girls to do what they've already been doing for a while now, which is living as sentient fleshlights until they have a prescription for antidepressants and no less than two cats, all in the name of empowerment or whatever. But nonetheless, that was fine right? Like that was celebrated. And of course, the narrative to which it alluded was, as it always is, that women are oppressed and shamed by a patriarchal society. And so they have to feel empowered through the inevitable thought to therapy pipeline that we just mentioned. And that was cool. But when you have been taught that you are racist and evil, that your country is racist and evil, when you've been deprioritized in the workplace, in college admissions, all of your favorite things get turned gay or into women, any opportunity to mock you is taken and ran with, but when you try to participate in poke fun too, then you're demonized. All of this happens to you over the course of a few decades, and in particular the last few years, and you just wanna have one teeny tiny little white boy summer, and then immediately, nope, shut it down, that's extremism, that's white supremacy, I don't care, it's white boy summer, we're skateboarding, we're causing mischief, we're listening to Blink-182, we're gaming, we're getting yelled at by authority figures, we're punching drywall, we're gaslighting women, we're jumping into lakes, and they hate it because we're having fun, and they are miserable people. It's one last score, boys, one last score before we go to the FEMA camps, one last hurrah, the final meme, and it's both completely unserious and completely serious at the same time, because it's like, yeah, society is coordinating to a effectively demonize white men, which we've known for a while, but you know what? Uh-uh, not this summer. This is our summer. And even that, even that they don't like. No, you can't just declare it to be white boy summer. I just did. And now I'm putting on my Sperry's, my pattern cotton button down shirt, my club masters, and I'm going to go climb something that I'm not supposed to be climbing because it's white boy summer. So we will examine the truth about white boy summer why everything that is right wing and or white gets traced back to Nazis, why the left is able to lie so effectively, why they fear camaraderie and guys just being dudes, group identity, cringing at cargo shorts as a product of anti-white conditioning. I'm only half joking about that. Then of course, the official style and music guide along with the official checklist. And of course, going outside and having fun as a political strategy, which will get us into the white boy summer super spreader weekend retreat and jamboree, which you could actually attend if you'd like. It's going to be epic, so do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. You might be asking yourself why I waited until August to start talking about white boy summer. It's actually a very simple answer. I have spent the better part of the last two years studying contemporary global propaganda, and I'm pretty sure we can pull this off. Like, we can just say, well... You know, with the lockdowns and everything, we really weren't able to fully experience white boy summer, so we're going to have to extend it further into the calendar, only temporarily, but we're just going to have absolute power over the calendar if we do this correctly. You know, we can just, it is with great reluctance that I accept this calling. I love seasons. I love Christian Girl Autumn. Believe me, I do. I love Pride Month. And once White Boy Summer has concluded, I will lay down these emergency powers and restore the calendar as it exists. But it's never that simple, is it? No, the everlasting White Boy Summer. We just have to get our feet in the door. We have to get our vans in the door. And then the whole calendar is ours. I'm joking. That is a joke. And that's the thing. This whole thing really is said tongue in cheek. And it really just comes down to that the people who hate us don't like it when we're having fun because they are legitimately miserable and insecure people. Like you can look at the rates of mental illness comparatively. You can literally just look at or talk to any of these people and see it clear as day. And so something like white boy summer is really just demoralizing to them because they exist literally to try to ruin our lives, whether it's by putting all of their effort into making sure that you can't shop somewhere without getting a shot or even like without getting shot actually, or whether it's some journalist or streamer who lives to tattle on us for having fun. Like these people live as directly. Derivatives. They live a derivative existence. You don't do anything. You don't contribute to anything organic to the society or to any discussion that you're ever in, ever. You exist to serve the power structures in this society. And without people like us actually challenging those power structures, you would have even less purpose. And so guess what? It's white boy summer. And the boys are renting a lake house for Labor Day weekend. And I am bringing out the most radical, the most intolerant, the most illiberal guys I know. We're going to be laughing. We're going to be jumping into water from dangerous points. We're going to be eating obscure meats. 
like we're gonna get some ostrich burgers going or something. We're gonna be wrestling, we're gonna be boxing, and inevitably someone's gonna get slammed or hit too hard and an actual fight is going to break out, but that's okay. Arguably, that was the whole purpose from the beginning. And most importantly, we're going to be having more fun than the people who hate us, which means that we win. So there's that. Also, um, if you've been looking for new merch, it is imminent. It will be released very soon. Very excited about that. And if you're interested in attending the White Boy Summer Super Spreader Weekend Retreat and Jamboree, we're going to have a good time and we're going to bring out a few members on the website sort of as like a thank you for supporting the channel. So if you're a member on the website, log into your account, go to Comrades Only, fill out the form, and then we'll get back to you. Um, and you can also find the link to the private Discord server there, which is so much fun in itself. But yeah, it's going to be a blast. And if you're a woman or a man who doesn't deserve his balls, you're not invited. Okay. Okay? You need not apply. Preference is being given to anyone over the age of like 42, so we can have that dad on the grill energy, you know, rocking the cargo shorts, the sandals, calling anyone who gets more than two burgers or three hot dogs big guy. I feel like that's a fair ratio. I'm not the expert, but that's the idea. Or if I've met you at an event, I want to see Red Polo Chad. I want to see Sawyer there. Charlie, you can come. Sydney Watson won't be there, but you can still come. She's not invited. She's a woman. So we're very excited about that. So if you're interested, go fill out the form as soon as possible. But anyways, we begin our analysis of White Boy Summer. Now, as we said, it really wasn't supposed to be a political thing. It literally started with Tom Hanks' son just spontaneously announcing it. And then like all great things, it was memed into existence. But I think it's important to realize that if you're a white guy in this country, if you're a white boy, you are essentially inseparable from politics. Like you are almost an inherently political figure. And what that means is that even if you'd like to be apolitical, you'd like to just live your life without having to take an interest in politics or devote any attention or energy to it. You just want to live and let live. You, everybody is individuals. That's fine. Even if that's you though, which it probably is in the majority of cases, it doesn't matter because your existence as a white guy is going to be at the center of political discourse in this country for a very long time, or at least in orbit to the center. And it already has been for a very long time, the last decade or so in particular. So we just have to keep that in mind because politics is just defined by how things should be structured in society. And if the popular and growing attitudes in society are saying that you as a white man are responsible for atrocities XYZ, that you need to pay reparations, that you need to yield positions of power and influence to non-white guys exclusively because you're a white guy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You just have to understand that whether you like it or not, the fact that you are a white guy is in itself political. And you can't change that without changing the politics of society because you had no say in being born white. And you definitely had no say in being born a boy. Uh, and you're never going to change that that is who you are. So what it comes down to is like literally developing an attitude of, yeah, I'm a white guy. Who cares? That's kind of epic. Because for the rest of your life, I would guess you are going to be viewed by society through a political lens, not a fraternizing lens and definitely not a transparent lens. Like you are increasingly going to be blamed for everything wrong in society proportionately to how many of these boxes you check. White, male, straight, Christian. And I say this because it's definitely something to keep in mind as we go forward, but also because given that this is the case, even if we do something funny like, ha white boy summer, that is eventually going to become interpreted as a political thing, regardless of our intentions, because we are viewed almost exclusively by society and by those with influence in the media and academia, et cetera, et cetera, in particular as a political thing. So we're simultaneously told that white people don't even really exist, not racially, not culturally, not in any real sense beyond appearance, but also that we are collectively responsible for the majority of the world's problems. We always have been because of slavery, because of colonization, because of whatever. And that's always the punchline for me because it's like white people have no shared culture. Really? Really? Because at the very least, we have the shared cultural experience of being told that we have no shared culture and also that everything is our fault. And even talking about white people makes a lot of people uncomfortable. It tends to make people on the left angry unless you're disparaging the entire group. But it also tends to make people on the right anxious. Like, hey, man, why are you talking about white people? Are you some kind of Nazi or something? No. But on that note, a useful barometer for determining whether a person with whom you're speaking is actually interested in honest discussion about these things is asking them to say something positive about white people as a group or something negative about non-white people as a group. Think about that. And even that idea probably is making some people anxious right now. But seriously, think about that. If you're going to berate white people for reasons A, B, C, and then celebrate non-white people for reasons X, Y, Z, the best way for me to tell if you're being honest, given that no group of anything has unfailingly positive tendencies, is for me to ask you to flip it. Like, okay, now tell me a criticism that you have of black culture. And they can't do it. Rather, they won't do it because they're dishonest. 
I can tell you things I like and dislike about anything because I'm an honest person, but they can't because they're dishonest. They're not interested in discussing legitimate problems and solutions. They're interested in ideological self-interest and conformity dopamine. Think about that though. Like, Why do we get anxious when we talk about white people in a way that isn't negative? It's because of propaganda conditioning. It is the same reason that we flinch when we hear far right, but not far left. The same reason that we flinch when we hear fascism, but not communism. And it's because you have been subjected to incessant propaganda campaigns for probably your entire life, depending on how old you are. Like every time you're in a classroom and you're taught that white people only are evil slave traders and colonizers. Every time you see the memes that always seem to go viral of, ha ha, these white guys, they look like they pay too much for weed. I'm totally owning them for not having knowledge of drug dealing be a greater part of their culture. Every time you read an article about how white children are racist because science says so, all of that is literal propaganda that your brain processes into subconscious associations. And over time, that will train you to flinch whenever white people are spoken about in terms that aren't explicitly negative because your brain is telling you that this is deviant from the perceived group consensus. White people are lame. They can't dance. They don't season their food. They're dorky. They're out of touch. They're old. And I know all of this because of tens of thousands of independently processed pieces of media and information that I've consumed over the course of my life. That's how that works, by the way, like neurologically speaking. And the people who disagree with me would agree with me if it were happening to other groups of people, but it isn't. So they lie. It's the same thing with fascism and not communism because you were shown graphic images of mass graves and emaciated bodies at a very young age when you were in public school and you were told this is what the far right is, but you weren't told anything about the tens of millions of people slaughtered under communism. And why is that? Because the communists wrote the textbooks. And if you can water down fascism to simply mean opposition to the left, then you can define conservatism as fascism. And if you can crystallize the association between white people and Nazis, then you can define any white people who aren't explicitly allied with the left as Nazis, which is exactly where we are now. And I'm going to keep explaining this. Um, but afterwards, I'm also going to explain why we're not Nazis, white nationalists, all the things that they slander us with. And not because we're trying to convince them, since they're always just going to lie about us anyways, but because there are a lot of people who just don't understand what these things mean because it's all very cloudy. Uh, there's a lot of white noise, pun not intended, because the degree to which the left controls the flow of information in this country. So there are a lot of people who would listen to a journalist cherry pick quotes from this monologue uh, to conflate what I'm saying with something hateful. But if you sat the same person down over coffee, they would understand the differences and that were actually completely reasonable. So that's why they slander. They cherry pick quotes. They deplatform. They refuse to engage directly. It's because they are liars. They are liars. It's kind of a basic point, but it's still important to remember. You know what else is something important to remember? Product mode can sneak up on you at any time. You know what else can sneak up on you at any time? The threat of danger. This is because, folks, it's getting crazier out there, and more and more of you are choosing to exercise your Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms with an American-made We the People holster. And these guys are more than just holsters. They're actually becoming a destination for patriotic Americans of all stars and stripes. So go to wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. Check out their complete line of patriotic shirts. They're a 100% American-made tactical gun belt with a proprietary talon buckle. They even have their own line of bacon jerky that's been flying off the shelves. You ever hear the phrase, when pigs fly? This is actually what that was in reference to, yet so few will take this into account. But most importantly, We The People holsters are custom molded to fit your exact firearm for a quick, smooth draw with thousands of options to choose from, plus a selection of custom printed holsters. You are sure to find the right fit for your lifestyle. So go to wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle right now. Get an additional $10 off with the offer code Doyle. Every holster, a lifetime guarantee. If it's not a perfect fit, send it back. It's not even a big deal. Get a full refund. With we the people holsters.com slash Doyle. We the people holsters.com slash Doyle. Very epic. But it's so true. Anytime conservatives and or white people do anything, political or not, it's always compared to Nazis. And it's because, as we've talked about in other videos, this country historically has been predominantly white. And so the group of people who have the largest incentive in preserving the country against communists are white people. Now, that doesn't mean that non-white people can't love America, can't live here. Lots of them do. Lots of them are even in this audience. So that's not what that means at all. It's just to say that there is a reason that 85% of the votes for the Republican Party are from white people. So if you can turn the society against white people, then then you'll be able to stop the largest impediment to the total transformation of the country into something unrecognizable to even someone as young as myself. It's the same way that if you wanted to completely restructure China, you'd try to turn the country against the Chinese. Or if you wanted to completely restructure Russia, then you'd try to turn the country against the Russians. Now, granted, you would never be able to pull things like that off in those countries, but the principle basically remains the same. And our enemies know that this is true, which is why anytime we do anything, whether it's as conservatives or whether it's a meme, white boy summer, we get called Nazis because it's effective and it shuts us down. Because like we said, every 
everybody knows from the time they're born that being a Nazi or being a racist is the worst thing you could be. Being a communist is fine. Being a racist against white people is fine. Those are even promoted and encouraged. But regardless, it shuts us down because we are terrified of those labels. Even though we know they're lies, and even though the majority of people in this country probably know their lies. It doesn't matter because the fear of being deviated from the group consensus is just that powerful. And so our only chance at winning is to have the courage to stand up against those lies until we're in a position where we can hold the liars accountable, which is done by having courage and setting examples for others to follow. And then, you know, maybe down the line, we get to a point where we can expand the libel and defamation laws to include terms like that so that their propaganda is less effective because they won't be able to just throw around words like, oh, Nazi, <laughs> white nationalists without being at risk of a reasoned and effectual lawsuit. That's really the most offensive part about it to me. It's just lazy. It's poor craftsmanship. If you're going to lie, at least make it original. Like you betray yourself by appealing to the established moral framework. Oh, this guy's a Nazi. We all know that Nazis are bad. You've exercised virtually no brain power. I'm a guy. I appreciate a good insult when I hear one. I appreciate some verbal sparring. But when you just say, uh, oh, Nazi, because Nazi is when you don't like communism and are socially conservative, or even the, uh, oh, McLovin, because white guy with glasses and dark hair, it's just lazy. We've heard it a million times and you've, you're just betraying the fact that you don't have knowledge or insight that transcends an airport bookstore. We're off topic, but I can't help it. As I've gotten older, and I'm still young, but I've really just developed a strong contempt for people who lie. They're literally tattletales. And it just gets back to the fact that your intuition is your greatest anchor for navigating the world other than the Bible. Like when you're a kid, all the things you think are cool are actually really cool. Soldiers, tanks, race cars, trains, building things, being a pirate, being a pirate. Then you're older and you're like, yeah, I was right. Those things are actually really cool, but it goes both ways. What are the things you disliked the most? Tattletales. These are kids who would sell you out to the established power structures for literally no reason other than getting off on watching you suffer. Not kids who would tell the teacher if you like knocked over their block tower or something. You deserve that. But kids who would snitch on you for doing something that had absolutely no effect on them whatsoever simply because they got off on it because they're little sociopaths. These are the kids who grow up to become journalists and they're not cool. They're lame. And we're further off topic, but it's okay. We hit on the inevitable connection between white boy summer and Nazis. Actually, there is one more point on that, which is that the memes that the journalists were complaining about had like pictures of Nazis and they said white boy summer and the journals are like, see, I told you so. And they're so tone. Well, no, they're actually just lying because it's like the reason that white boy summer memes end up having Nazi imagery is because as we've discussed, anytime white people do anything, it's too white. It's racist. It's not diverse enough. It's not equitable, etc. And the conclusion of those implications is always the same. Nazis. And so people are just doubling down on it. Like, yeah, okay, call us Nazis. We'll just embrace it for our memes. Why? Because Nazis wearing pit vipers is funny, okay? It's a good bit. You can have hot girl summer, which not only objectifies young women, but that's a call to action. It's not just a meme. It's a call to action. It says, dress provocatively, sleep around, have a hoe phase, drink, use drugs, do whatever you want as long as it degrades you. That's perfectly fine and celebrated and promoted in the media. But God forbid a couple memes get posted of Nazis wearing pit vipers. Then all of a sudden, the journalists are melting down. I'll be honest with you, and I know that I'm right on this, I am more offended by a cultural trend that tells young women, our sisters and daughters, that degrading themselves through immodest and sinful behavior is empowering than I am by a photo of Adolf Hitler wearing pit vipers. And in fact, I think it's pretty funny. And I'll actually ruin the joke by explaining why it's funny. It's because you've got pit vipers, which are you know these really obnoxious sunglasses, which are implicitly white sunglasses because they're popular with skiers and snowboarders. Those also happen to be overwhelmingly white activities. What can I say? We like the snow. And so you take that and then you're like, like, what else do they say is a white activity? Oh, being a Nazi. Boom. Hitler wearing pit vipers. It's objectively a good bit. You're juxtaposing a silly looking pair of sunglasses with a universally condemned historical figure. And it's funny. And people might say, oh, you're laughing at something that's really bad. So you're not taking it seriously. The fact is, I actually take it more seriously. Because if you know anything about humor, you know that it largely comes down to contrast. And me laughing at Hitler wearing pit vipers means that I recognize the stark contrast, which actually means that I take it more seriously than you do. So I'm a better person than you if you don't think it's funny. So Hot Girl Summer says, do things that will make you depressed and corrode your soul. And that's fine. White Boy Summer says, nothing. There's no checklist. So I made one. Stand by. But yeah, anything that will breed mental illness in society is promoted. Anything else is either ignored or demonized. But as far as the actual definitions go, unless you want a militantly enforced white ethno state, you're not a white nationalist. Unless you want white people to rule over every other race of people on earth, you're not a white supremacist. 
Those are the definitions of those terms. And the only reason the definitions are stretched is to appeal to the negative attitudes surrounding the terms without maintaining the necessary integrity to apply them correctly. Because if they were honest, then they couldn't use those terms, which are very effective rhetorical weapons. So don't buy into it because it's all BS. And don't let anyone you know who's reasonable buy into it either. So there's that. But yeah, you can and will be accused of that, even if you just acknowledge that white people have any like positive tendencies as a group. That's why so many people just refuse to acknowledge that they're white. Great example of this recently was with uh, Chris Rufo, I think his name is. So watch this clip. Ask you what, particularly if you're saying whiteness is a thing that is being constructed as negative and shouldn't be, name, name something positive that you like about being white. Well, sure. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll answer with a, with a, a thing. There, there's a lot of documents that are floating around public schools that say things like uh, timeliness, showing up on time is a white supremacist value or a white value, white dominant value, things like rationality, things like the enlightenment, things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, objectivity. And uh, these are very strange things to be ascribed to a racial identity. My view is that these are actually should be ascribed to every individual human being, every individual human being, regardless of whatever racial category we impose on them. Name something positive about being, that you believe is positive about being white. <laughs> Again, I, I don't buy into the framework that the world can be reduced into these metaphysical categories of whiteness and blackness. I think that's wrong. I think we should look at people as individuals. I think we should celebrate uh, different people's accomplishments. And uh, again, I think the idea, you, you mentioned Ignatiev. Ignatiev says the goal is to, quote, abolish the white race. Um, in any other context, this would be interpreted as a near genocidal slur. Uh, I don't buy into it. The reason I'm not going to answer your question is I reject that categorization. I think of myself as an individual human being. It's the same thing that we talked about in the beginning, refusing to acknowledge that being white isn't actually terrible by dodging it and just pivoting to actually we're all individuals, which is a good point, I guess. But you have to understand that you're outnumbered. Black people, Hispanic people, Asian people, they all view their racial identity as incredibly important. And they're going to view you as a white person, even if you don't view yourself that way, which is more consequential <laughs> since, again, as we discussed, literally being white is going to become increasingly political in the near future. And that's why the left is able to lie and win arguments so effectively in terms of public perception, because they can just appeal to the framework and definitions that they own. And we just don't have the knowledge or infrastructure to push back tangibly yet. And the ironic part of all of this is that if you really want to achieve a post-racial America where no one thinks about race, you have to let us have things like white boy summer. You have to let people acknowledge their differences, make fun of them and have fun. We were doing a pretty good job until probably Obama's second term. And you think about why, like you had the early 2000s, you you had the Chappelle show, everyone made fun of everybody. You had South Park, same thing. You were still allowed to make racist jokes in the mainstream. But then right around the 2010s, that stopped. The media started using terms like whiteness, social justice, and, and that just exploded. And now everybody's very tense. It's certainly tense. And all that's left is politically correct racism and tribalism. We talked about this in the woke capitalism video. Ha <laughs> ha, let's beat Norway. And we're only poking fun at Norway because we're allowed to because they're white. Or even recently with like the Italian memes. Ha <laughs> ha, imagine being Italian. Italian people have pasta sauce for blood. Okay, how about imagine being Mexican? How about what Somalian people have for blood, right? But you won't do that because you're a coward because racist jokes never stop being funny. The only ones that are approved now, though, are about white people or white countries and Italians in particular, because they've maintained a very distinct and unified culture. So obviously they want to attack that. Making anti-Italian jokes is like saying the CIA killed John Kennedy. It's like a totally Reddit tier, totally approved, non-threatening action that masquerades as actually being edgy or a threat to the establishment, but it's not. So if you unironically send anti-Italian memes to the GC, you should be kicked. And you can only be readmitted if you say that Mexican people have Baja Blast for blood. That's the toll. But seriously, like if you want to live in a post-racial society, you have to acknowledge differences and have fun with them. Because if we just ignore and, and sort of like outsource the acknowledgement of those differences to the people who pull the strings. Things, they're just going to pit everybody against white people and it's not going to be a good time. It's going to be tense. No one's going to have fun. That's what they always say. The elites want to pit everyone against each other. That's not true. They're not like pitting black people against Asian people. They're just pitting everybody against white people. Like even when black people beat up Asian people, what did they do? They call it white supremacy. So we just have to be clear with what we're talking about here. And ironically, it seems that the best solution is just for everybody to go back to being able to make fun of each other without serious consequences. And what better environment is there for everybody to make fun of each other in than a group of guys just hanging out? This is the ethos of white boy summer. And I think that this is actually the biggest 
problem that they have with it because the whole meme is basically being spread by any young guy who's right wing. So it's really not as much of a race thing as it is a gender thing. And we've talked a lot about this on the channel and I will repeat it because it is so true. And that is that the biggest fear of the establishment and its servants, more than anything, I would argue, is authentic and pious masculinity that is free to channel itself because that's the most powerful force in the world. But more importantly, it is the force that is most antithetical to everything that these people stand for and seek to do. And I really sympathize with the men in this country because they have purposefully destroyed all of the spaces that we have to fraternize with other men. And it's because those are the spaces that we require to form bonds and relationships with other men. And now there are a lot of guys who don't really have any real friends. And it's very sad. Like men require all male spaces. And it's not necessarily even because women are the problem. It's because men are men. Boys will be boys. And what tends to happen when you introduce women into the equation is that the dynamic kind of transforms into basically a dick measuring contest. And then this is the worst part. When you recognize that, you try to correct that, the simps come after you. Oh, what are you, an incel? Is he bothering you, queen? You fool, I'm trying to help you. We used to have the Boy Scouts, we had social clubs, universities, we had the workplace. Now it's all gone because of pathetic men like you who derive their purpose from female approval. I will never forget this. My middle school group of friends, the best group of friends I ever had, it was destroyed because one of the guys started bringing this girl around. And I've just always been so instinctively based. I told them, look, man, this girl's flirting with you. She's flirting with him and him. This just, this is not good. She needs to go. Oh, are you mad that she doesn't like you because you called her a whore? No, and I stand by that, actually. But we're here to play handball, you idiot. You're gonna destroy us. And so, sure enough, the subversive nature of the woman manifested. It plagued our bond like black ink. And it was brother against brother. And so, it was just over, many such cases. The haters and losers, they're gonna dig into that like, oh, is that why he's sexist? Because he was traumatized by that? And it's like, first of all, no, if you paid attention to the story, you know that I was sexist before that. Second of all, stop projecting your trauma onto everyone. You'll notice this with like every time they communicate online, Every time one of these people sees something they don't like, they'll reply like, oh, who hurt you? What happened to you that made you like this? And it's because they can only conceptualize the world in terms of trauma because these people are all traumatized. And it's that trauma that has made them so spiritually ill. It's the same way that they can only conceptualize fraternity and camaraderie as something gay. If you hang out in any of these circles long enough, you'll see, oh, well, Captain America and Bucky are definitely gay. Ron Weasley and Harry Potter are gay. And it's because their brains are so fried by pornography and this incessant hypersexualized media culture that they can only interpret human interaction through a sexual lens. There's a great C.S. Lewis quote that speaks to this and something like, those who can't conceive friendship as a substantive love, but only as a disguise or elaboration of eros betray the fact that they've never had a friend. And it's so true. They don't understand male friendship because they've probably never had male friends who act like men. They've either tried to, but then ran away crying because they couldn't handle the verbal sparring at the lunch table. Someone told them they look like pizza or they just hung out with girls or other little bitches. Is there an operative difference? Not really. But insecure men, they don't do well in these situations and so they crumble. And that's why the idea of white boy summer is problematic. It's a bunch of implicitly or explicitly right-wing dudes coming together, simply declaring that this is our summer. We're embracing our identities. We're having fun. We're not apologizing and we're offending everyone in our paths. They fear the lads coming together and enjoying themselves unapologetically. That's what it is. They fear any form of white people acknowledging that they exist. And I just have to say that's really funny to me because non-white people overwhelmingly, not all of them, but overwhelmingly view their racial identity as very important. And it's like, when white people do it, it's just for a meme. It's for white boys summer. It's seasonal. I can't help but find that funny. And we have to find things funny. We have to have fun because part of why we lose is we don't have camaraderie. No man is an island. If we want to win, we have to work together and we have to have fun doing it. If you ask anybody in the military why they're in the military, and we'll be talking about that more um, in the next couple of weeks, what they'll tell you is that basically, amongst other things, it's for the camaraderie. It's like the best part of it. And equally as important, the people who hate us hate that we're having fun. And so we have to have lots of fun as a political strategy because it demoralizes them. You know how like, you know, when you break up with someone, you start posting more on social media to let them know that you're out there, you're having fun, you're living your life without them because you're petty. It's like that, except this time you get to make communists cry and you get to live in their heads rent free. It's pretty cool. So anyways, I will now get into the official white boy summer checklist. You still got some time left. You might have to do a speed run, but I think that you can still pull it off. It really isn't too complicated. If you're a white boy from the suburbs, these are like programmed into your soul. And for legal reasons, I'm not telling you to do any of these things. I'm simply educating you on what the checklist is. I did not make this checklist. It was incepted into my mind by Jake Paul when he appeared to me in a dream. It's fairly simple. And if you're really one of the forgotten gamers of America, you can probably knock it out in an afternoon. But here it is. Climb something that is not supposed to be climbed. This is self-explanatory. We touched on this earlier. Um, go 24 hours without internet or cable television. 
Uh, board a boat for at least an hour. Be on board a boat for at least an hour. Uh, you're going to want to skate down an entire parking structure. Go to an amusement park, and then before you leave, try to win one of those Rastafari bananas. Spend no more than $10, and then if you can't do it, rage quit, make a scene. Um, you're going to learn at least one Blink-182 song on guitar. Um, find a nice place to watch the sunrise. You arrive 30 minutes prior with a black coffee and then just enjoy God's creation. Um, ask an old person what they think about transgender people. Uh, ask a black person what they think about transgender people. Um, go swimming at night, preferably in a lake. Read a book that would probably alarm your family members. Kiss a girl. Now, this one might be controversial. Like maybe we shouldn't be focusing on girls, but this is only the first half of the mission. The next half is the part that's actually important, which is that you don't ever talk to her again. And if you need me to explain what this is testing, then you're probably not going to make it. But so uh, start a surprise wrestling match with a friend of yours until one of you is unironically angry. Now, the idea here is that even if you get pinned, you just keep going. You just keep starting shit again until maybe, you know, he doesn't get mad. Maybe he just throws you on the ground, whatever. Maybe you're not mad. You just keep going until one of you gets mad. That's the idea. Um, get kicked out of a retail establishment. Do something nice for a husky teenage boy. There is nobody who needs our kindness and support more than the husky teenage boys. Remember, we are all 14 and husky. So go do something nice for one of them. Buy his Taco Bell order, whatever it is. But yeah, that's the list. I feel like that encapsulates everything that it needs to. I feel like that's pretty thorough. Just some reasonable mischief. Nothing excessive. We're not animals. We value order. It's just reasonable. And as far as the music guide, there's a lot of debate over this. Nick made a pretty good playlist. And I'll admit, I was hesitant at first. You know, I thought, can we really delegate the responsibility of aggregating the soundtrack of White Boy Summer to to a guy named Fuentes. I don't know, but he did a good job, you know? But my interpretation is a lot angstier. I would say literally nothing except Blink, Bowling for Soup, Neck Deep, Sum 41, Weezer, the Ataris, maybe sprinkling some Offspring, Hum, Green Day. Quite honestly, the soundtrack of the last three years of my life has been 99% Blink, Bowling for Soup, Neck Deep, and Hum. And it's covered the necessary range for me. So that's what I would say. And you really do have to be careful with it because they're trying to bring back pop punk music, but they're only pushing people who aren't angsty white guys at the center of it, which is annoying because they're trying to like redirect that angsty energy into their PC narratives. And it's also because the meme potential of 2000s pop punk mixed with 2020s decline of America is so good. Like imagine turning the radio on and it's just like... There was a race war, but she held my hand. Like be so good. The summer style guide. I've said it once. The pattern cotton button down, couple buttons open on the top, couple buttons open on the bottom, throw on a minimalist wristwatch, get some Sperry, some white vans, you're golden. It's as simple as that. Now, as far as sunglasses, there are three acceptable sunglasses for white boy summer, as far as I'm concerned. Those are the Club Masters, the Wayfarers, and then anything made by Pit Viper. And I could explain why, but I think you instinctively should understand why um, this is the case. So yeah, I'm excited. You're excited. There's a lot to look forward to. Of course, the White Boy Summer Super Spreader Weekend Retreat in Jamboree. Then there's Hoctoberfest. You thought I forgot, didn't you? And then, you know, ultimately achieving victory, which we will in the end. And we're going to have fun in the process, which makes ugly people seethe, which is just more fun. And then it creates like this positive feedback loop until we restore American greatness. Yes. Yo, what's up, little bro? Go ahead and smash that like button. And while you're down there, you should leave a comment. Because if you did, that would be utterly bodacious, my man. That's like one white guy. What if we did like a Midwest white guy? Like, oh, be sure to just sneak your way down to the subscribe button. And uh, if you don't mind there, guy, you know, hit the notification bell. That's like almost Canadian. It depends on where you are. You know, when you get into northern Michigan, you get into Minnesota, Wisconsin, you get some of that. But uh, And then, of course, you, you're going to want to subscribe to the channel. No, we said that. You're going to want to share the video with a friend is what you're going to want to do. And it's hard to find friends if you're a guy because all of our institutions have become infiltrated by women. And actually, it's almost better in a way because that acts as a litmus test to, uh, to the guys who are going to be deviated from you know whatever the task is and then going to want to pay attention to the women. I, the greatest example of this was recently in terms of that actually being an effective strategy for filtering out undesirable male friends. I was, uh, I was in Las Vegas two months ago and every guy in our group, I didn't know most of them because this group was aggregated independently of me, but every guy there was just an exceptional guy. Like really not only in terms of character, but in terms of like their agency, like every guy in that group could have been his own main character. It was just really a great group of guys. I had so much fun with them. And uh, we had like a, a guy's night, one of the first nights we were there. And uh, one of the guys, you know, who I love, one of my best friends got a text from this girl that we were with that she was going to come hang out with us. And he just goes, oh, hey guys, you know, so-and-so is coming to hang out with us. And this guy who I'd never met before just, he just goes, oh, that's so f 
fucking sick. And I just immediately like, you get it. Like, it was just so good. I love that guy. James, my captain, I love you if you're watching the content, which you probably don't, which is okay because we don't watch each other's content. Nobody watches anybody else's content, which is weird because you would think that we all watch each other's content, but we don't. It's just like you, you're introduced to these people and it's like they also make content. You're like, oh, sick, but no one actually watches each other's content. So sorry if that kind of, you know, ruins the, uh, the fantasy of, you know, oh, they're working and they're watching each other's content. It's this big ecosystem. no. No, not even. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. We love the two-minute outro. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. I, was, I almost was like, in my mind, wouldn't it be funny if I put pit, pit vipers on Jesus? No, nope, not a good idea. That's probably satanic. I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll DM some people about that. But anyways, yes, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Poof.